to understand Stonehenge. We have to look at the entire landscape, both spatially but also through time. The most ambitious of these new studies is the Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes Project. Using state-of-the-art survey equipment, the team are mapping every structure, both visible and invisible, across four square miles of the sacred site. In a field just over a mile and a half to the northeast of the stone circle, the Hidden Landscapes Project detects the shadowy outline of a structure. It's a crucial find, because it could mark the start of the next chapter in the Stonehenge story. Well, we try now to set out points of the monument that we actually detected in our magnetic data. OK, that's that one. Intrigued by what they've discovered, Professor Wolfgang Neubauer and Eamon Baldwin stake out the find. So that's the east side of the facade. Yeah, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Based on his experience of European archaeology, Professor Neubauer recognizes the layout. It's a communal burial tomb known as a long barrow. And these are really huge buildings. And that we actually get this in this landscape is <laughs> just amazing. Data analysis shows the long barrow is made up of a number of wooden posts and timber walls, known as palisades. Far larger than anything built previously, these mass graves represent a revolution in the way of life in the Stonehenge area. Before 7000 BC, people in Europe survived on what they could hunt or forage. But then, the Neolithic, the New Stone Age, begins. The invention of farming allows a more settled lifestyle and communities start to bury their dead in mass graves. The large burial tomb analyzed by the survey team marks the period when Neolithic life arrives in the Stonehenge landscape, around 3,800 BC. Bones from long barrows like this one show that before a person was entombed, all their flesh was removed. Then their skeleton was chopped into pieces. They had very peculiar rituals for burials. They had defleshment. They had cutting off of heads. Heads were actually treated completely different than the other parts of the body. There was preparing of the bones to be put into this large tomb, which was a tomb for the whole community. The remains of up to 50 people, men, women and children, are laid to rest in these mass graves before the tombs are finally sealed. In the end, the whole building was covered with a huge amount of earth dug out from big pits to build this long barrow as a house for the dead people. 